Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Hyperledger Global Forum 2021. Uh, we're here at the start of day two uh, for segment one, which is the segment for Asia Pacific and European audiences. We have a terrific set of keynote conversations and presentations uh, and, and one really cool fireside chat uh, coming on a couple of them, actually, now that I think of it. Um, I, so let me just get the day started with a little bit of housekeeping and a little bit of framing for some cool things that are happening uh, in the Hyperledger community. First, uh, why don't we jump in? Uh, the, uh, I, I, of course, Hyperledger Global Forum uh, has been uh, helped and assisted with a very generous sponsorship from our sponsors. So I, I can't help but mention them right now. Accenture and IBM as diamond sponsors, of course, as well as Filecoin Foundation, Hitachi, Siemens, and Zulig Pharma as our platinum sponsors. Their support has really made so much of this possible. So thank you so much for this. Um, also a key thing, I, I Hyperledger Global Forum, like all Linux Foundation events, are governed by a code of conduct. Uh, we that published on the uh, website for you all to read as a part of Hopin. I, I, you know, this is a, a collaborative community. This is one where there'll be lots of engagement between us. We trust that everyone has read this uh, and understands. If they ever feel uncomfortable, they can always come to us and talk because we really uh, believe very strongly we need to create a culture and an, an environment where everyone feels welcome. Uh, truly, all are welcome here. And so uh, the code of conduct is a key part of that. So I appreciate everyone's attention on that. Um, just to set the ground a little bit before we jump in, you, you know, Hyperledger has always been an international effort. I, I've been um, until this year on a plane, probably 65% of the last five years uh, uh, traveling around to help talk to the world about Hyperledger. Um, and we've accomplished a lot in those five years. We have an amazing array of projects you heard about, uh, so many of them from Arno yesterday. Um, but really, the, the coolest stats are the ones that, that really speak to our global foot, footprint out there. Uh, we have 175 uh, different meetup communities that uh, are represented in over 75 different countries. And so many of them got very active during the pandemic in uh, taking what were previously face-to-face -face conversations, putting them online. And suddenly, I found myself and many of our community members presenting uh, at the, the, uh, the Sao Paulo uh, meetup uh, pres uh, community or to the Tokyo meetup community one hour later. Later, right? Uh, I'm not sure I'll ever get on a plane again, actually. It's pretty addictive and pretty fun to be able to do that. Um, so that footprint has grown, and you heard about the, the technology releases, uh, uh, again, in Arno's presentation yesterday, so I won't go into that, but those communities have been alive and putting out new code. Another real source of this has been the, the, the labs. Uh, a lot of new labs have come in in the last few, uh, last few months and really this year, showing that there's this innovation going on on the ground. Uh, lots of ideas, lots of people putting pieces together, uh, and some major contributions as well have come in in the last few days. You've heard about much of that here at the event. Um, but let's talk uh, really about this international footprint. Uh, these different, uh, in, in fact, this year alone, there's been 60 different virtual meetups taking place um, uh, since the beginning of the year. All right. Uh, and this has been a chance for people to get to know each other face to face and understand what's what's really at heart at the heart of our community. So um, we've also been busy launching some regional chapters. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, just this year, we launched uh, chapters, which are basically collections of meetup communities in Latin America. Uh, 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 in uh, Italy, because uh, we've been active in all sorts of uh, uh, cities in Italy. Uh, the India community really rallied together, the, the, both the, the schools and the companies headquartered in India uh, got together and created quite an amazing array of not only uh, uh, um, you know, meetups and content, but also starting to uh, you know, channel their community into contributions into the projects. Um, and also just recently launched the, the Hyperledger Africa chapter as well, um, really giving us this uh, uh, you know, really rich representation in the global south that we're really happy to, to, to see happen. Um, we also announced uh, just last week the formation of the Hyperledger Japan uh, chapter. Uh, uh, Japan has long been uh, uh, an important market for Hyperledger technologies. Many of our core governing board uh, members have, are, are, are headquartered, and uh, many of the companies are headquartered in Japan. Um, and uh, we've been really eager to see and, and happy to see the community grow there. Uh, so uh, with this, we think there'll be an even better position for, uh, we'll be in an even better position as society reopens to be able to help uh, uh, you know, take advantage of the community that's there and, and the real use cases that we see emerging from that, that part of the world. Um, 
We also have long had a very active community in China. Many of you have heard about uh, uh, that community. Uh, actually, last December, they were the first meetup to meet again face to face. These are photos from uh, the uh, Hyperledger Beijing meetup group. Uh, and we have a very active WeChat presence. Uh, if any of you are calling in from China, welcome uh, and, and really glad that you can be here. As I mentioned yesterday, six of the sessions, actually seven of them, uh, seven of the sessions here at Hyperledger Global Forum are in Chinese, uh, and uh, we want to do everything to make sure you feel like a first-class uh, member of the community, because uh, there's so much uh, good engineering work, so much good uh, development work coming out of China, and obviously lots and lots of deployments out there as well. Um, I, I, this year has also been a really uh, a time when we've really invested in getting <clears throat> internationalization into the heart of the projects, helping them be not uh, strictly just English language. Uh, so in addition to the 13 lang different languages that we've seen meetups hosted in, we uh, drove a contribution campaign uh, in Hyperledger Fabric around the Fabric documentation that resulted in eight new languages being supported in the core documentation uh, for Fabric and kept up to date with Fabric releases. This is really remarkable. Uh, and it was only possible through the help of a tremendous number of volunteers who organized their efforts, who chose tools to help synchronize that work uh, and, and have really uh, gone above and beyond to make that possible. Um, we've also seen translations of the Hyperledger homepage itself uh, to, that, that adapt naturally when, you're, when you've set your language preference in the browser, um, again, to make it feel like a welcome place for, for people who speak all, all of the world's uh, other major languages. Um, and then we've also seen uh, the, uh, uh, the Hyperledger Fabric training course translated into Spanish as well, the online course that we have for that. So some really fun things there. Um, also, beyond the code, uh, many of you know, we have these special interest groups. These special interest groups are uh, have long been a part of Hyperledger. I think the first one we started was the healthcare uh, special interest group uh, back in the first year we were in, in existence out of a sense of intuition that the healthcare community and the blockchain community had very little overlap between them. And we needed to find some way to bridge that gap uh, and talk about the use cases, talk about the limits of the technology as much about the potential. Since that time, we've broadened out into telecom, into uh, uh, cap capital markets and trade finance, into all sorts of domains, uh, including one that we're gonna talk about next, which is the climate actions uh, and accounting special interest group. So stay tuned for that. Um, we also believe education is a really huge part of growing the community beyond the code. Uh, we've had uh, uh, free courses uh, uh, distributed through edX around Fabric and Sawtooth, um, as well as Hyperledger Indie and Aries for quite some time, and, a, and as well as a, an exam and certification course around Fabric and Sawtooth. We've updated the courses for Fabric, uh, and we've also now released new free content for the Hyperledger Bezu Essential. Um, and that's uh, I, uh, the first time we've done this for Bezu. We anticipate doing a lot more. We're working on uh, a, a certification and, ex and exam process for Bezu as well to help grow that community and help people who have those skills be able to market themselves and go get some awesome jobs in this domain. Because um, again, this has got to be about building these layers beyond the core developers so that we get, get more people using it and, and get more traction. Um, oh, oh, sorry, I forgot to advance the slides. Um, I, I, so uh, there's the slide on the training materials. Um, we also uh, have a, a vendor ecosystem that uh, has grown this year to over 24 different Hyperledger certified service providers. These are organizations who employ staff who have passed these different courses uh, and can we, we can attest then to the fact that they kind of know what they're doing. Uh, so uh, they range from large companies with familiar names all the way to startups all over the world. Uh, if your organization would like to be listed there, please get in touch uh, and we'll talk to you, uh, talk with you about the criteria for being listed. But the, this is a, a very short list to be able to turn to when you want to be able to, when you need a, a, a blockchain network built and you're not sure who uh, to, to work with to get something like that done. This is an important part of everything we do. Um, uh, finally, if any of you have been asking, how do I get involved uh, in, in uh, more in the technologies and the, in the, in the software projects themselves, we have a very rich set of project demos that we've been doing on the side of the, the other breakout sessions. 
please come to many of those. Those are being presented by core maintainers on those projects. Uh, and, and the ones coming up today and tomorrow include Fabric and Indy and Bezu and Ursa. There's also tomorrow a conversation amongst the Hyperledger Cactus uh, core contributors as well um, uh, about where that project is heading. Uh, please come to any of these. And if you're interested in the translation efforts, there's a, a, a panel particularly on that tomorrow um, uh, in the segment in segment two called uh, the Tower of Babel, a panel for translations in Latin America, Africa, and Europe. Um, this is just core to who we are. So hopefully this gives you a flavor of that international footprint. Very quickly, I, I, we have an exciting set of keynotes, both in this segment happening in the next hour and a half and in the one in about uh, eight hours, I think the timing is, I, 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 happening for Europe, uh, Europe and the United States. Uh, that includes uh, um, I, I, a panel on uh, uh, discussing the application of distributed ledger technology in climate. I'll make an introduction to those panelists very soon. Um, it includes uh, in a fireside chat uh, I've, uh, I'll be having with the town like Buterin, uh, which I think will be really fun. Um, uh, following that, we'll have a conversation about reopening air travel, uh, 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 using verifiable credentials, using some of the technologies we've built here at Hyperledger to make that possible. And that'll be with uh, Marie Massery from IATA and Drummond Reed from Evernim. Uh, and, and then in segment two, we're going to hear uh, from the Hyperledger Governing Board Chair, Rob Palatnik, uh, who has been one of the biggest champions for the use of this technology for core financial infrastructure. Uh, and I think he's going to give his kind of view from the top of where the industry is heading and, and why this is still such an important thing to get right. Following him will be uh, uh, Karim Youssef from IBM. He, Karim is the new uh, uh, head honcho when it comes to all things blockchain at IBM. Uh, and he has some exciting announcements planned for uh, his keynote. So be sure and catch that. Uh, and finally, I, I will hear from Mary Lasserty, who's a, uh, a professor uh, in supply chain uh, at uh, the University of Alabama, who'll be talking about her research in what are the, uh, what are the ways that this technology has been used to really deliver value. Um, don't forget, uh, we have uh, I, I, a virtual hallway track in Gathertown that I, uh, we'd love to see many of you there in between sessions, during breaks, uh, even after the sessions end for the day. Um, and during the breaks in between, you can also get to know other people here at Hyperledger Global Forum in our networking tab. I, I just it, it's, 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 a, it's a randomized way to be able to meet somebody else here, and it's really kind of fun. Um, I've met quite a few new people through that already. Uh, and then don't forget to visit the Kiva booth. Uh, this uh, It's hard to do uh, uh, attendee gifts for a virtual event because shipping things around the world is uh, not only expensive to do, it's bad for the environment. Um, but what we've partnered with on Kiva is to give you a credit uh, that you can use to make microloans in Kiva system uh, as a recognition of the role that they're playing in driving the adoption of uh, self-sovereign ID and, and, and distributed ledger technology worldwide through the Kiva protocol, which is a really awesome thing. So be sure and visit them and links to everything on that is in Hoppin. So with that, I'd like to transition now actually to our first panel. Um, so uh, we have an ex uh, uh, a really exciting panel here for us to, uh, uh, with, with uh, to, I'm sorry, <laughs> really exciting panel. I'm, I'm so excited I can barely talk. Um, uh, here to really focus on the application of blockchain technology to um, the fight against climate change. I, I, there, there could not be a bigger challenge that we face as a society uh, in uh, that, I mean, even the pandemic, uh, you know, hopefully we'll get past that. Hopefully, you know, uh, in many cases, we, we started to, we, we have, ha we have gotten past this. All of these crises are interwoven, of course, but the real systemic crisis that we, as, uh, that we face as a society is figuring out how to manage our presence on this planet and live in coexistence with, with, with the planet that we've inherited. Um, and there are a set of, of organizations uh, and individuals who have been working tirelessly for years now in thinking about how do we use the benefits of blockchain technology uh, uh, to try to build carbon trading markets, try to uh, have, uh, ease the process of regulation uh, in, in monitoring and, and in fighting uh, uh, carbon emissions and other wasteful uses of energy? How might we encourage microgrids? How might we encourage uh, green finance? And so to help us understand this a little bit deeper, I've asked a few of my friends, um, people who uh, have come together and have been part of the Hyperledger community, uh, and in fact, are, are giving presentations and other parts of the agenda, um, to have a kind of an open uh, and frank conversation about 
the potential for the application of this technology to the fight against climate change, the risks of doing that, the limitations of doing that. Um, but let's also let's 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 think big. Let's let's brainstorm. Let's let's see where we can go. So with that, uh, if I can get them up on the stage, uh, virtually speaking, of course.